Well, this video just fell into my lap and I can market it with clickbait too, like use this simple trick to diagnose your failing three-way switch. This is a three-way switch that turns on our kitchen lights and uh, of course now it's totally broken, but I'm gonna simulate what happened this morning when my wife flipped it up. So that was a phony sound effect in an edit, but essentially the thing crackled and popped in there. And because this is a three-way switch, it's controlled from two locations. And if you haven't seen my video on how three-way switches work, you should look at it because in my humble opinion, I do the best job of explaining how three-way switches work of anybody on YouTube, and it's really fast too. But anyway, there's a handful of things that could be causing this. One is it's overloaded, but these lights are hardwired, and of course the load has never changed. Uh, the other is that there's a loose wire nut or a loose terminal or the switch itself has failed from years of use, and I'm betting on, on that. Um, with these three-way switches, as I say in the other video, they don't have an on or off, they have a this or that. So one of the things you can do is go to the other three-way switch, which I'll do now. So this is the switch on the other side of the room that controls the same lights, and if you just walk over there and flip this switch to the other position, you're moving the active traveler wire, there's two traveler wires between the switches, to the other one. So then if you go back to the first switch, and flip it on, one of two things will happen. Either it will work perfectly, like it's doing in this case, or it'll crackle and pop like it did before and nothing will have changed. If it still crackles and pops, that tells you that the problem is on the common terminal of the three-way switch. That is, the wire either coming in from your circuit breaker panel or the wire going out to your light, assuming your lights are, you know, wired in a rational, modern way uh, to code as they would be now for the most part. And, uh, but if uh, it works perfectly, as it's doing in this case, that tells me the problem is in one of the two traveler connections because we, by flipping the other switch, we switch to a different traveler wire. So uh, you want to look at the terminals for the traveler. You want to look at any wire nuts that are pigtailing down to the traveler. Or more likely, uh, this switch is just old because we use it all the time and, and needs to be replaced. The, every time the contacts open and close, they arc in there. And then finally, it just kind of falls apart. Kind of guessing that's what's going to happen. Um, we'll see. But this'll, this trick, if it works, if you flip the other switch and then this light works without crackling, then it's likely you can get away using this switch for a little while uh, till you can go and get a switch, pre preferably a commercial grade three-way switch to stick in here um, to replace this because it really needs to be looked at. So that's my diagnostic trick. If you have a three-way that's crackling, go flip the other switch and see if it still crackles or if it works perfectly. And that'll tell you whether the problem is on the... Um, uh, uh, common terminal or one of the two traveler terminals. Let's open this up and see what's wrong. I'm, I'm curious. I know the guy who wired it. He's not an idiot, so I imagine it's the switch is bad, but let's see. Oh, one more thing. I mean, besides the fact that we need to clean the smudges on our wall. When I put the uh, switch across the room in the position it was in when we first noticed this problem, and now I run this switch, it, it doesn't work at all. So a wire is burned through or a contact is burned through. We're kind of kaput here. And actually, I think I still hear some uh, a little bit of crackling in there. Maybe I don't have to simulate it. That's why I simulated it before, because we're in this state now where it's really kind of broken. But maybe if I do this. <laughs> well, I thought it wasn't crackling until I took that last scene into the editor, and it sure as heck is. So, uh, yeah, we got to get in here and replace that. And also clean this off. That was the other thing I noticed in the editor. This is filthy. It doesn't look so bad in real life, but ugh. Here we are. These conductors come right out of a 14-3 cable, so there's no pigtails to worry about, and the connections are solid. These two wires on the brass on the bottom are the travelers, and then the top one on black here is the either the input to the light, the, the load, or, or the power coming in the line. I, this is probably the line. Um, so uh, the connections are all solid, but look at that, look at that label, how dark that is. And this back has kind of got like gooey char stuff on it. So I think this has been heating for a while and it's probably a fire waiting to happen. So I'm glad we're getting it out of there. Maybe we can take it to the bench and test it. I was a little disappointed that none of the switches in that box had their grounding terminal connected to an equipment grounding conductor, so the yokes are floating. I like my I like the yokes to be grounded because it grounds the switch plate screws and everything, so I may address that when I put this back together. But can you see how matte this finish has become back here where it's been heating all this time? So this thing's this thing's certainly been cooking. So I have a beeper here on my uh, multimeter, and I will put one end on the common here, and then the switch 
throws this connection to either here or here. So uh, if I touch it here, so that's working and this one should be dead. Okay, now if I flip the switch, this should now be connected to this. Ah, but nothing happens because this is the side that has failed. So the switch is definitely bad. Quick trip to the local Ace Hardware and I came back with this Leventon Plus switch, which looks like this and see it's a little bit heavier duty and they don't have the backstab terminals because they're kind of unreliable. That's been the case in my experience. So hopefully this will last longer. But then I saw that it's got a wider paddle than this. It, it doesn't have the reducing ring. And I thought, well, now I'm gonna have one fat one and two little ones. So I went ahead and bought two more to replace every switch in that box so that they'll all look the same. And yes, I wound up spending $24 instead of, you know, $8, but uh, I just feel better about having good devices in there. And here they all are sitting in the box and I've got my yokes grounded now, so happy about that. So the good news is the build quality and feel of these switches is fantastic. They really definite open and closing and I can tell they'll last a long time. Uh, the bad news is that they sit back with, without that retaining ring, they sit back from the front of the switch plate and look a little crappy. Uh, so that's unfortunate. I'm sure Mac Fisher or someone in the comments will tell me why using uh, spec grade switches in a residential application is stupid or, <laughs> or what I did wrong. I tried to uh, loosen the mounting screws uh, so I could use the switch plate to pull the switches forward and make it flush and I wound up cracking the switch plate here so I'll have to address that. So a little bit of <coughs> failure and disappointment there. I mean my understanding is there's like residential cheapo switches and then spec grade just to be the next level up and then there's commercial and specialty stuff. And a lot of that's marketing, I'm sure, but uh, uh, I kind of expected to get this little flush. I'll keep fiddling with it and maybe we'll, we'll make it better. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.